Hello, uh, my name is Mark Sorrell, I'm Development Director at Hide and Seek. Um, the process of uh, making a game creatively is uh, extremely similar to the sort of agile production technique, um, a very iterative procedure. Uh, when you first think of a game, um, you think of game mechanics, you're building a kind of an abstract machine. Um, because, <clears throat> because games don't really exist in the real world, in a very abstract form, the only way of testing them is to play them. Um, if you think of a, a game of chess, for instance, you can look at the chess, you know, chess board is real, chess pieces are real, the rules of chess are a real thing, but the game itself is only experienced in the minds of the players, and not only that, but it's a, um, experienced differently in the minds of each player. They both play a different game in their heads and both think different things at different times. Um, and games are off kind of unique in that in that they only exist in that form. Um, a book is the same for everyone who reads it. They might have different interpretations and feel different things, but the text is the same, whereas games are, are naturally um, enormously uh, emerging. Um, so, hence, when you come up with the idea for a game, the mechanics that, that underpin it, you have to then play it in order to find out whether or not it works. So you have to go follow a kind of agile and iterative procedure. You play the game, see if it's any good, if your assumptions were correct. If they were, you would find them. If they weren't, you throw out and start game. Um, so it's a, effectively very much like an agile system. Um, in terms of the original sort of creative spark that lets you come up with that game idea in the first place, um, I'm a great believer in the, uh, the Don Draper kind of concept of think about something very, very hard, then forget about it, and the idea will come to you. Um, Obviously, playing a lot of games is extremely important and understanding very, very much how and why the games that you enjoy work, how and why the games that you don't enjoy don't work. And not only that, but how the games that people enjoy that you don't enjoy work and why they enjoy them. Um, there's an awful lot of the psychologist, I think, to game design. There's a lot of behavioural psychology, a lot even more behavioural economics. A lot of stuff's enormously important in game design. So, play lots of games read an awful lot about how people actually think and how they actually work, be very Machiavellian, care about how the world is, not how you wish it were, uh, and then uh, once you've thought about the problem very, very hard, then uh, go away and forget about it, and the game will come to you in the shower. Um, usually in real life, uh, people don't take all that kind of effort to uh, learn stuff, and if, if they are given feedback and they are told this is no good, they never come back. In a game it's very different. People will keep getting clubbered at the same level yep. 15 times, 20 times, 30 times, they play for a month before they move to the next level. Why does it Why not happen? Yeah. Because That's because the nature of what games are. Games are a structured play, and play is how we learn, effectively. The reason why children play a lot more than adults is because children are having to learn an enormous amount of things all of the time. They are learning machines, hence they're playing machines. Um, there's a game... When you play a game, what you're effectively doing is building a, a, a model in your head of how you think the game works, and then you're inputting into this sort of black box that you've made in your head and seeing what the output is. If you've predicted the output correctly, then you can assume that your assumptions about how this black, bo work, black box works are correct. So you'll try another couple of tests to make sure you were really right. If you were right, you'll move on to a different test to learn a different aspect of how it works, and if you were wrong, you'll go back. Again, it's an iterative procedure. And the reason why games are so good at doing it is because they can, they're constructing this thing in your head that you can test. They're, 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 they're playful and designed to be something that our brains enjoy learning about. There's a, a famous game designer called Raf Costa, whose uh, book, uh, A Theory of Fun, is uh, an excellent primer for this kind of stuff. But he says that boredom is the absence of learning, and I think he's pretty much right. That's when we're bored, when there's no new stimulus, when there's no diff nothing different, nothing we haven't seen before nothing we can learn. So games are all about learning because play is learning, is games is play, is learning. They're all the same thing. So our brains are designed to do this. That is what they do. They learn new things. Games teach you new things. And that's why they're so incredibly uh, addictive and compelling and all the rest of them. So if you had to create uh, a learning experience for adults, mm -hmm. what is it that we can learn from a game designer? What you can learn from a game designer is how much you shouldn't gamify things. Games, uh, the idea of a game, the, the, learning is intrinsically enjoyable. Uh, the reason games are enjoyable is because you are learning something. So, if, if 
you want to, to teach someone something through a game, it's possible to do so, but it's important that what you do is let them play with the system, with the information that you're trying to teach them. What you're not trying to do is add a game onto the process of learning. The process of learning is already massively fun. The process of learning is why we play games in the first place. I think a game on top of a game can often have disastrous results. Um, if you look at the way the difference between learning and education, I think is really interesting. People learn things all the time for their own enjoyment. They'll quite happily sit and read thousands of Wikipedia pages. If you ask any nine-year-old about whatever their favourite topic is, be it ponies or uh, the Renaissance painting or fighting with sticks, it doesn't really matter what it is, they will know everything. They will be desperate to learn more stuff and definitely desperate to regale you with their, their knowledge. Um, learning is fun. Learning these games is play. So if you want to teach people something through games, what you do is you, you just set up an environment that lets them play with the knowledge, with the system, with whatever it is you're trying to get across, and let them prod it themselves and see how it works. Present it as the black box, let them input, let them see their outputs, let them build up their own picture of how this thing works. If you're trying to teach people something that they don't want to learn in the first place, then rewards can come in handy, but you have to face the fact that Behavioural psychology is long, uh, behavioural economics has long proven that extrinsic rewards replace intrinsic rewards. If you enjoy doing something for its own sake, and you then uh, ask, uh, you then um, offer to pay someone to do it, then they'll enjoy it less because they're now focused on the mo on the money, on the, extri on the extrinsic reward. So if you want to teach someone something they don't want to learn, then you have to accept that what you're going to do is, yeah, they might learn it, but they'll never enjoy learning it, and that you will have then whatever system, whatever gamified system you've put in place to, to encourage them to learn is going to be the thing they're interested in. It might work in terms of getting them to learn the thing, but it works in the same sense that Pavlov ringing his bell makes a dog drool, rather than in the sense of genuinely making someone who's desperate, who wants to learn about the subject and is interested in it. So games can make you do stuff, but they can't make you like stuff. Thank you very much for your ideas.